Hello, uh, my name is Jacob Fritton. I'm the Director of Agriculture for the Nature Conservancy here in Nebraska. Uh, really appreciate you taking a couple minutes to watch this video on the Nebraska Soil Carbon Project and the opportunities that are available for farmers in central Nebraska to work with the project on adopting soil health practices onto their farm. Uh, this project is a collaboration between Central Platte and Upper Big Blue Natural Resource Districts, the USDA a Natural Resource Conservation Service, uh, the Nature Conservancy Ecosystem Service Market Consortium, Cargill's Beef Up Sustainability Program, McDonald's, and Target. Uh, the project goal is to work with central Nebraska farmers uh, installing new soil health practices. Uh, our goal over five years is to work with farmers to get 100,000 acres of practices out on the ground. That includes practices, including cover crops, uh, no-till, and diversifying your crop rotation. So why are we doing this project? Uh, well, we know that soil health practices have benefits to both the farmer and to conservation in our ecosystems. Um, but we also recognize that soil health practices can be uh, risky to adopt. Uh, there's a lot of short-term uncertainties for the producers. We know that these practices can uh, enhance a field's resilience and productivity, and they also provide ecosystem services like storing carbon. There's a lot of uh, new programs for soil carbon that are being developed, but the available information is, is uh, pretty scattered and varied. Uh, at the same time, there's uh, private companies that are looking for ways to support farmers and also reach their sustainability goals. So what we're doing with this project is, um, you know, bringing financial incentives to central Nebraska farmers for implementing soil health practices and also providing technical assistance through the project team and partners and, and other local and regional experts for the participants to help guide them as they adopt these practices. Uh, we have a soil carbon pilot project that provides a farmer's opportunity to better understand uh, how these programs may work and how they might be able to leverage them on their operation. And then we're additionally looking at how these practices across the landscape are impacting uh, our water quality outcomes. There's really uh, two components to this one project. There's the funds that are available for implementing new soil health practices that you can access through your local NRCS office um, through what's called a Regional Conservation Partnership Program. Uh, these, these funds uh, and program work very similar uh, to your traditional EQIP program. Uh, the payments vary depending on which practices you choose. You do uh, have the option of, of signing up multiple practices uh, for the same fields or stacking them on the same fields. So that's one portion of the project. And then we also have the soil carbon pilot project, which is um, uh, an effort that we're doing with a group called Ecosystem Service Market Consortium, who's a nonprofit organization developing a uh, carbon platform focused on farmer needs. Uh, one thing that makes this uh, pilot program a little bit different than uh, some of the other things that are going on within the soil carbon program space, uh, this project's really just playing for participation, um, using it as a learning experience for the project team and for the farmers we work with. So it's not based upon performance or how much store uh, carbon you store. The other thing is that um, it's only a it's not a long term commitment. It's only an annual agreement with uh, uh, ESMC in order to be able to participate. So what uh, what does a farmer get from participating in in the project? Uh, first off, I mentioned the financial assistance. The NRCS payments they said they really vary depending on what. Uh, so health practices you're putting in place, but you know, for an individual practice, it can range from you know twelve dollars up to uh, you know above forty dollars for like a multi-species covered crop. Um, all of those practices are really line up with the you know NRCS's expectation for practice codes. So there's also additional incentives for participation in the ESMC pilot project. Uh, we pay per acre per year for that. Uh, that's $20 uh, per acre per year for being enrolled in that pilot project. There's also several other project research op opportunities to work with us on um, economics and decision-making uh, of farmers uh, that have incentives tied to that as well, too. I mentioned the technical assistance that's available um, in between the multiple project partners and, and links to other resources. And we want to make sure that farmers have what they need to uh, the knowledge that they need to be able to make these changes on their farm. Um, 
the project's going to provide multiple uh, training events, you know, leaning into leaders in soil health and agronomy and other other topics. We'll have quarterly events um, throughout the life of the project for farmers to be able to come and learn. One thing we like to provide the farmers uh, as that are involved, if they're interested, is an opportunity to, to share their story with a larger audience. There's a lot of conversation around agriculture. A lot of it doesn't come from the farmer's own voice. We like to give them the opportunity to be that voice if they so desire. Um, for enrollment with the soil carbon uh, pilot project, it's it's connecting farmers to emerging carbon markets uh, and carbon programs and you know, giving them some insight on how that might fit into their operation. And then as well, uh, being enrolled in that uh, soil carbon pilot project, um, those farmers get back a, a report on the impact of how those new soil health uh, practices are impacting their their field. Uh, if they decide to work with us on economic analysis, there's also numbers that can come back to them on the financial uh, return on investment of these practices. So uh, other things to, to consider, um, enrollment in the NRCS payment program uh, and or the ESMC pilot, uh, farmers have the option of participating in one or both. Um, and they can uh, make that decision on what suits their needs so they don't have to sign up for both, uh, just a, a matter of what's eligible for each of the individual programs, but they can layer them if they so desire as well too. Um, if you're working with NRCS uh, for the RCPP funding, um, those use the, the same criteria that they use for EQIP where they go through and, and rank applications and, and assign, assign funds accordingly. Um, for the NRCS funds as well to the farmer, the, the field that is enrolled would need to be within the geography of the Upper Big Blue or the Central Platte Natural Resources District. Um, for farmers that are, are working with the ESMC pilot project, there's a, an annual um, get together to collect information on, on how, that, uh, how that field was farmed. And then for, for both the NRCS and the um, pilot par program participation, they're both, uh, both looking for, for new soil health acres only. So um, if it's the first time putting a practice out, obviously that qualifies. Uh, I can also talk to the team because there are uh, measurable improvements that would count as making a practice change. So a good example of that is if you were to switch from like a single species cover crop to a multi-species cover crop. So how do you become involved if you uh, are looking at getting uh, the funds for implementation from NRCS. The key thing there is to talk to the experts at your at your local NRCS office. Um, those those experts will be able to explain the RCPP program and provide guidance and help walk you through the application process. Um, applications can be submitted anytime during the year, uh, but for an application to be ranked and considered for the next round of funding, which would be for practices you would be putting in place in uh, 2024, it would need to be submitted um, by later this year in fall. Uh, the exact deadline will come later, but um, the key thing is if you want to be involved uh, and, and look at getting those funds, reach out to your local NRCS office and they'll be able to help you, help you through that process. Um, if you're interested in the Soil Carbon Pilot Project, Best thing to do is just reach out, reach out to a representative at the Nature Conservancy. Uh, at this point in time, that would be me. Uh, you can contact me at my email. It's here on the screen, jfritten at tnc.org. Uh, you can also try my cell phone. I'm a little bit harder to reach there. I bounce a lot between meetings. But um, just get in touch with me, and I'd be glad to follow up and, and talk with you about being enrolled in the Soil Carbon Pilot Project. So just a little idea on kind of what the timeline looks like. You know, if you're interested, like I said, you first want to reach out to your NRCS representative. They'll help walk you through the application process to get an application submitted. When the time comes, they'll they'll do the ranking and, and reach out to work on farmers on contracting for that. If you're interested in the soil um, soil carbon pilot program, that enrollment uh, really comes later when you put the practices onto the ground. Uh, but, you know, running through this process, like I said, I, I think folks that would be going into their NRCS now and, and looking at enrolling or, enrolling or probably targeting uh, practices in fall of 2024. If you do have um, 
If you do have practices that are going out this fall that you want to follow up on the ESMC enrollment, those would be um, stuff that would be done uh, this, this upcoming winter. Uh, these are all the key contacts and folks that you can reach out to if you're interested. Uh, myself at the Nature Conservancy, uh, Courtney and Marie at the NRDs, and Josh and Joe at uh, NRCS. I'll be able to help you out or put you in contact with the right person to get you help. And like I said, if you're interested in the NRCS funds, the key first step there is to get in contact with your uh, local NRCS office. And so Here's a, here's a map with the phone numbers and contact for all those individual county office. Uh, if, you're, if you're just getting started, best place to start off with would be where you have your SFA, uh, FSA paperwork housed. It's probably the best place to get started. So with that, uh, like I said, really appreciate you taking time to learn more about the project. Um, I think uh, access, if you need access to this, uh, this presentation, be glad to get it to you. Uh, feel free to, to reach out to the project team if you have any questions or are interested in getting involved. Thank you very much.